Hello and welcome back to another year of season previews here at the Essendon Royals Soccer Club. Today we're filming at Metricon's Hampshire 54 display home here in the heart of Essendon as we talk to a range of figures from around the club, including some of our sponsors, about the year ahead at Essendon Royals. Today we're kicking things off with none other than our senior men's coach, Vital Ferrante. All right, welcome back, uh, Vital. Great to see you ready for a, a new season. How, how are you feeling ahead of the new campaign? Oh, I'm excited. Um... You learn to appreciate how much we love the game by you know what's happened last year and missing it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're all chomping at the bit to uh, get started. And you've been coaching senior football for a long time. Obviously, you know to lose a whole year like we lost last year and have that you know interruption even this preseason. How, how challenging has that been? Oh, it's all unknown. You now we're in um, you know uncharted waters to use a phrase. Um, and we're, I'm not the only one. Mm. All senior coaches are in the same boat. How hard do we go? You know, I think that um, this season there's going to be a lot of soft tissue um, injuries throughout, you know, the senior uh, setup across the state. Um, so it's about managing that. You know, I trust Toro and our medical team to be able to manage it. But you know, some of those soft tissue injuries are going to be unavoidable because the boys have missed a year, and we don't realise we're not professionals. Mm -hmm. But you know, for ten years in a row pre-season and a, a season, you become hardened. Having the time off, it's been a blessing for some from um, an impact point of view and joints and whatever, but the soft tissue thing is going to be something very interesting to manage. Also, the psychological thing, you know, last year we actually did two full pre-seasons yep. and yet didn't play a competitive game. Mm. So that was something that we had to, to manage. And, you know, my philosophy this time around has been bring the enjoyment that the boys have missed, just make it a bit more fun. Mm. Um, and that's what we've done this pre-season. Yep, and even even this pre-season with that little snap lockdown we have, obviously the boys lost out on a couple of games there. How, how did you sort of have to pivot to, to, to that scenario? That I'm not happy about. Yeah. Like that, the reason is you, you, you plan your sessions, when you're gonna do conditioning and game time and minutes. Um, we missed three games mm. through that. Is that, well, two games through the five day, yep. but we're unfortunate that the game we are supposed to play against Geelong two weeks prior got flooded out. Mm -hmm. So in effect, we've lost three games because through the COVID, the five day, I had two games set up. Mm -hmm. We had the Saturday and the Tuesday. So that has been an effect. I believe that um, we're probably a game behind where I wanted it to be. And again, then you get sort of um, in a situation, do we force some harder sessions now and then you say, well, if you do that, what's the cause of it? So that's been a juggling act. Hopefully I've got it right. Yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about the, the squad, obviously, you know, despite missing last season, most of the boys have come back. So what does that say about, I guess, the mentality and, and the togetherness that you built last yeah. year through those two pre-seasons? I was asked that question a lot during the course of the events. I was never, I was never worried. I knew no one was going to go anywhere. Um, because again, the whole project has been getting, uh, rebuilding a a culture um, and the individuals that we went through an exhaustive process to, to build this squad I wasn't afraid of losing a majority of boys even though you know all of them got phone calls from other clubs that wasn't a stress for me and the players that we did lose were for specific reasons you know one had to go back to Japan mm -hmm. uh, Starks had to go back to Queensland so it was more forced changes so I wasn't worried about that and I'm wrapped you know I'm really really happy that the majority of the squad's there, um, so we don't have to re rebuild the, the, the building process. And they've gone now through this this unusual journey. Yeah. I think it's going to help as well. Yeah, and and obviously you've you've kept that squad together, and you've actually been able to build on it as well. So tell us a bit about some of the players that have come in. Yeah. We've got a nice mix of once again some experienced players like like Tucker and Matteo Balan who have come in, and some youngsters like um, Max Branov and Francesco Palladino. Yeah, so. Yeah, you, you, you've summed it up there. Um, again, we're rebuilding, so I'm aware that to do this and do it quicker than how you would normally do it over a course of three to four seasons, we needed to bring in some experience, and that was part of my agenda early doors. Um, but I love youngsters. Youngsters are exciting, they've got an intensity, they've got a, a fearlessness, so you need that. And I've always been an advocate for, you know, if a kid's 17, or, you know, nothing prouder than giving him an opportunity at senior level if they merit it. So it was always part of the agenda. But we're not in NPL yet. 
So it was gonna be a little bit more of a challenge of getting top end talent younger. That's not to say I, I really rate our talent and I was really surprised with the talent we've got and I'll talk about a couple of them in a minute. So the players that I did recruit, in addition, they're all players I know personally. Mm -hmm. They all fit the culture that we want. Some of them have been with me in the past and others I've tried to get in the past. So, you know, Rob Santilli, yep. big fan of. Huge experience at this level. This guy's a perennial winner. You know, at, at training, he's screaming at, at players for making errors and this is what, what's required. And that's what Rob's brought to the table um, and a great character. Matteo Balan, I've had a history with. You know, him and I go back a long way and, you know, as a DM, to be able to get him at our level is, you know, a blessing. So I'm wrapped that he's on board. Taka, I've known a long time. You know, one promotion at Pauline, um, been part of a very successful era while he's been here at, at that state, uh, sorry, at that MPL1 yep. level. Um, and I love the way he plays. He brings some of the traits that I want, um, that, you know, never ending work rate, that, um, yeah, you know, pressure, that approach, yet, you know, a fantastic technical uh, player. Um, so it was wrapped with him. KK goes without saying, Christian Constantin, he's a, you know, a, a really decorated career. What I love about uh, KK is gone from Balling Juniors, then part of Northcote, who had that amazing young group that, again, culturally built and, and exceeded expectations by getting promoted to the MPL. He was part of that. Yep. And then, of course, going to the South and winning those titles. So he's got that that grassroots and that elite level yep. and still very young in um, in terms of football. And again, great character and he's a winner. And he's been really professional um, since he's come on board. Um, the other one, Dave Parkinson, he's one I've known about from New Zealand. He's had a sort of half stint here in MPL 2 or MPL 1 it was at the time. Left footer, Centre back, big, strong, but very calm on the ball. So he's been a great asset. Um, and then we, we go with the youngsters, yep. you know, and Max Brown, I've always been a fan of. I've known him from when he was 14 years old mm -hmm. um, at all the elite levels and been part of Melbourne City. And, you know, sitting down with him, he won an opportunity of playing senior level. What I like about him, he didn't have these stars in his eyes that it had to be A-League or MPL. He just wanted a real environment with good leaders that will teach him the correct um, processes of playing senior football. And he's been great. He's been playing yeah. week in, week out. Um, you know, 70 year old striker, yeah. he's still got a long way to go. It's a, it's a unique position. Um, the striker, uh, keepers, they're a craft that takes a little bit of time, yeah. but he's been really, really good. Checkers, Francesco Palladino from um, Hume, you know, we signed Liam Missalides from Heidelberg, who's been part of their um, youth program. So it's exciting. It's exciting that young, you know, talent mixing in with these experienced boys that have played either A League or MPL. It's been really good. The blend's been great. Yeah, fantastic. And, and another another youngster that's come through from from the the lower ranks, Bailey Pregen. Obviously, he's had a, a couple of run run outs yeah. in the senior over preseason. Tell us a little bit about him and, and how that that journey sort of progressed. Yeah, what I've liked for when I've taken the, the, the job. Some of our talent from our reserves and, and younger have been pretty good. Um, and last year, a few boys were part of the senior squad. Mm -hmm. um, but this time around, Graham, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Bailey, yeah. he's been promoted to the senior squad and he's played as centre back, you know, as a youngster mm -hmm. and held his own where he's needed to. So that's been great for him. But the other one that we don't talk about is Jude. You know, yeah. Jude, the goalkeeper, he's been there since he was eight, nine years old as a junior. Yeah. He's 17 years old. He's played most of the uh, pre-season games. Mm. He's been fantastic, you know? So he's in the senior squad. It, it, it's a great opportunity for him, but he deserves it. Mm. You know, it's, it's because he's got the ability and the attitude. So that's been a really, really, really exciting uh, part of this. And even our reserves, the boys that we've currently got there, you know, there's boys like Coots who have been coming in and training with us, JP, yep. um, Minero. So, you know, we've, they've been given that little opportunity. And when we've played games, They've been great. They've done a serviceable job and held their own. So it's it, the squad in a whole is 
is quite healthy in that regard. And that's going to be really important this year for the reasons you touched on earlier, right? Obviously, players coming back after a year off, potential for injuries, need to rotate the squad. So that's, that must be really pleasing as, yeah. as head coach to have that overall arching squad to, to be able to lean on. And I've, I've had to lean on them already. Because of the experienced boys, mm. some of them I've, I've preserved because of the lack of games. Yep. And these boys have had to play. And we've played NPL2 sides and, so, and they've done really well. So now I know what, what they offer and where required, there's, I'll have no, no problem in, in you know, whoever needs to slide in into whatever position is appropriate. Yep, fantastic. And obviously, uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've learned that Davey Van Ship will be your assistant coach this year, joining the coaching setup. Um, obviously, still playing for, for the club as well. Yep. What's, what's that been like working with him? You've obviously worked with him as a player for a long time. How's that relationship sort of evolved now into, yeah. you know, as, as an assistant coach as well? It's been a, a really easy transition. There's no secret, Davey and I go back a very long way from when he was a young 17 year old, you know, and was playing at Richmond, uh, playing with my brother Michael. Yeah. And then of course, me being able to coach him and, and him doing so well, you know, for me, one of the best ever players in, in Victoria, no disrespect to anyone else, but yeah. what he did in his years at NPL. But what people don't know is Davey's always had this um, passion and desire to be a coach. And he's been coaching professionally, like full time, at Melbourne City um, for a number of years for when they, from when they introduced their academy. It's been his full-time job behind, you know, behind the scenes, not as the player, yeah. as the coach Davey Van Ship. So that's always been something that he's always wanted to do. And he's done all his licenses. In fact, he's excelled in all his licenses. And he was even part of the academy of Melbourne City, getting up to then being the, the coach of the, their under 20 side, who are, you know, one of the most exciting teams going around and they've got some real talent in that Melbourne City squad. Mm. Um, due to the shift and the change of venue and his other jobs in, in the school system, he, he wasn't able to continue that move to, to Casey. Yep. And the opportunity came, I sat down with him. He wants to get into senior coaching. Him and I, even as player coach, have always had conversations about his opinion on, on certain things of the game and whatever, mm. even me as a coach, asking for those kind of things and vice versa. So our relationship's very strong in that regard. And it's like we're, we've been evolving to this situation. Yeah. He's uh, tactical now, uh, he's gonna be a very, very successful coach at senior level. He's um, very articulate, the way he puts on the sessions and relays the information to the senior squad has been really, really good. And I've, it's been great for me. I learned from, from other coaches as well, you know, through the system he's been at, it's been a great, thing for me as well, but the systems that he's trying to um, articulate to the players were on common ground and he runs certain parts of it. So that's been good. Mm -hmm. But I've said to him, when it's time to play, I just want him to be a player. Yeah. I want him to enjoy being a player. You're, I don't want him to have the coach's hat on. That's my job. Yeah. Then when, when it's training and when it's after the game, then he can have his coach's hat on. Yeah. So that's been really good and he's done it seamlessly, yeah, absolutely yeah. seamlessly. Yeah, and, and what represents success for the Royals this year? What, what, what have you set, I guess, as a, as a goal for the squad? Okay, internally, because I, I don't like to say this publicly, I've got KPIs and they are certain points need to be achieved, certain um, milestones and, 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 and key things need to be achieved in a season because I've stat statistically I know what needs to be achieved to ultimately win your competition yep. because that's what we all play for. Yeah. I can't guarantee we're going to win the competition. We've got, it's a very, very strong competition. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to try and win the competition. Yeah. So what's success? Success is giving ourselves the best opportunity of trying to win the league. Fantastic. So, you know, it's, it's about improvement. But one thing that's important for me here at, at Rawls, this is a very, very big club in, as far as junior numbers, members, the girls, um, side of things and the women's. We've got a huge network as a club. And what I want, I want Essendon Royals talked about through the week that they're playing at home on a Friday yep. in the Victorian soccer circles because they want to come and watch us play. The way we play, who's playing, and of course that we're competitive in every game because I think we've got a huge um, following that's ready to, you know, you know sort of grasp yep. onto this senior team. I just want to make them proud and, and we attract a, a crowd there of juniors and our network coming to watch us play week in, week out. That, 
that ultimately is what the club wants. Fantastic. Well, Vete, thank you so much for your time today and running us through what to expect for what should be a very exciting 2021. No problem, mate. Thank, thank you. you. Too easy.